about how do you even know when you're going to need soft tissue augmentation? So soft tissue augmentation, whether we're talking about teeth or implants, you know, the biggest thing is, is really just having gingival health, right? Mm -hmm. So when we look at, like, look at data, experience, personal experience, but mostly research, you know, going back decades and decades, you know, the, the key determining factors typically are going to be, you know, gingival thickness mm -hmm. and gingival height, right? Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about teeth, you know, you'll know that you need some soft tissue work if you have gingival recession, meaning you have some root exposure. If we're talking about implants, if you start to see the implant components like the abutment or the implant collar or threads even, then you know you're going to need some soft tissue work. Um, on the gingival thickness side of it, you know, we need that thickness mm -hmm. to protect the underlying bone, to, pre to prevent further recession. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, those are the two main indications is when you need to get more vertical height or, mm -hmm. or horizontal thickness. So if we're just looking at implants, just implants specifically, yeah. you can tell, like if you placed an implant, you got a crown on it, then you see some recession, then you start thinking, and everything's healthy, you start thinking, Soft tissue augmentation? I mean, that's a great question because it depends on where the implant is, right? Because if it's a central incisor, then yeah, you're like, I want to fix that mm -hmm. because it doesn't look good or it's, it's, it's just a gingival deformity that, that a patient can't live with. Then you'll have patients, of course, that are like, well, I have a low lift blind, I'm 90 years old, mm -hmm. I don't care. Um, if it's a posterior tooth, you, know, you and I have both been doing implants long enough to where you, you see the the implant collar or the abutment sometimes and you're like, ah, whatever, don't worry about it because mm -hmm. it's on tooth number 30 or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and that's fine. So the, the key thing in those situations is, number one on the patient side, does it bother them aesthetically? But on our side of it, if it's exposed, is, is there still enough tissue thickness, mm -hmm. gingival thickness and health to where you know, we, can, we can still consider it healthy? That's what we have to determine. So for me, just because you have a little bit of a, 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 an abutment exposed, I don't just necessarily jump into surgery, but I do jump into surgery if the tissue is really inflamed, bleeding, you have you know, purulent exudate. Mm -hmm. um, that's, those are things that drive me to think, we gotta get some soft tissue on there. Okay, so how about if you have a site, let's say number nine, say it looks healthy, looks okay. like not, it's not irritated, uh, looks like healthy tissue, but there is some recession. You see a millimeter of the implant. Yeah. Is that something where you think, let's take out uh, this tool from our tool belt and maybe use soft tissue augmentation? Yeah, so there's, so what you're, the example you've just brought up is, you know, we have aesthetic considerations, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we don't like it aesthetically because it's, he it's healthy. So if we're talking about one millimeter of, of height difference between, let's like, say, number nine and number eight, mm -hmm. Being a periodontist, I still want to look at non-surgical treatment options first. So, for me, I want to look at anything I can do without without going to the to the knife. So those would be: can I can we re remake the crown? Mm -hmm. Can we redesign the abutment? Those are some non-surgical things that we can do uh, to usually gain back a millimeter. Now that's under the assumption that the implant's placed in a good position, right? If the implant's placed in a in a uh, improper position, if it's angled too far facially or positioned too far facially, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, look at the implant crown and abutment design first. But if you're absolutely, if we have to do surgery, which we're going to talk about, um, then we have several different options. If the tissue's already thick enough and healthy enough and we're just trying to bring it down, a lot of times we'll just go with a, with a basic connective tissue graft to get that one millimeter height or even two millimeters of height. If the tissue's not healthy at all, it's too thin, it bleeds or whatever, then, then a lot of times we'll have to do some horizontal augmentation with, with a uh, free gingival graft to get a little bit more keratinized tissue. Mm -hmm. I see. So if it's, if it's just a little bit of augmentation, you're not gonna immediately jump to surgery. You're gonna see what else is in your repertoire to, to, to Absolutely. Augment. Yeah, patients um, don't like surgery. Right. You know, so. But if it's a big defect, a, a big, like what, like four millimeter defect or something, I guess when do you when do you say, you know what, let's just resort to soft tissue? Like, is that just like your salvage um, yeah. tool? I would say, you know, soft tissue work is, is typically the, the last resort for me. Okay. You know, uh, so if a patient comes in and they got, I, let's just use your example, I've got four millimeters of recession on my implant. You know, the first question always is, is, is the implant savable? Mm -hmm. We're going to keep the implant or are we taking it out? Mm -hmm. And then we can go through that criteria. 
But if we're assuming we're going to keep the implant, now say what what are some things that we can do non-surgically um, to improve this uh, gingival contour to make it look better. If we can't do that, if the crown's as good as it's it, as it's going to be, the abutment's designed perfectly, then we look to surgery. Mm -hmm. And then typically, if we're talking about cosmetics, most often it's going to be some type of a connective tissue graft. Okay. Now, why is it that it's sort of like a salvage um, tool to use? Is it because it does shrink over time and it's just kind of like a, is it a patch? Well, you know, a lot of times it's the etiology of the recession. You know, so I, I would say, you know, whenever you have recession around a tooth, as an example, you know, we usually look to toothbrush abrasion, you know, I brush my tooth too hard or occlusion or whatever you want to, uh, whatever your belief is about gingival recession around teeth. When it comes to in a, an implant, there's a lot of different reasons for that. It, mm -hmm. I would say more often than not, it's it's going to be, you know, something other than the necessarily peri implantitis. It's going it's going to be, you know, uh, implant position, implant angle, you know, too big of an abutment, you know, too over, you know, an overly contoured crown. Those are the most common things that, that cause gingival discrepancies, mm -hmm. especially in the aesthetic zone. So the etiology is a little bit different. Um, a lot of times it's, it's, especially if we're talking about tooth replacement, by the time you take out a tooth, augment the site, put an implant in, you, know, you lose some of that keratinized and attached gingiva. And a lot of times for us as clinicians, we're not trying to, to get patients you know, sold on more surgery and they don't want to do more surgery. We just want to just do the implant, right? Just do the implant, do the crown. And we kind of forget the soft tissue. Over time that catches up, that, that catches up to us. So I would say, you know, for me, that's the reason it's, it's more last resort is because a lot of times in the, in the flow of the work, the, the workflow for, for treatment planning, we forget about soft tissue. Mm -hmm. It's either that or we're a little afraid of, of telling patients up front that they're going to need a gum graft in addition to all the other stuff that, that mm -hmm. uh, they're having to be sold on, you know. Right, right. We, we're afraid that if we, if, if we had an, another graft, another procedure, they're going to say no and go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of it's just, it probably needed to happen beforehand. We just mm -hmm. didn't, didn't want to do it. Right.